Hello everyone, welcome to the 12th lecture of the course. In the previous lecture, we studied about the human being through direct observation. And now we study the interaction of the self and the body. So in module three, we have been studying the activities of the self. And in this lecture, we study the interaction of the self and the body. So looking at the self, we can see that there are 10 activities in the self in two blocks, block B1 and block B2. In block B1, we have the activities of realization, authentication, understanding, determination, and contemplation. And in block B2, we have the activities of imaging, comparing, analyzing, selecting, and testing. And we had studied the content of these activities. We can also see that on the basis of imagination in the self that is in block B2, we have the behavior, work, and participation in the larger order. Now with this, we'll go to study further. Now we will study the coexistence of the self and the body, the self being the consciousness and the body being the material. And the two are coexisting. As a human being, I am coexisting with the body. And this is something that we had talked about earlier also, but now we'll talk in detail. There is exchange of information between me and the body. In this transaction, there is only exchange of information and there is no material exchange, something that we had talked about briefly earlier. Now, how this exchange of information is taking place? If you look at it, I am sending information to the body and receiving sensation from the body. So the self is sending information in the form of instructions to the body and receiving information in the form of sensation from the body. So when I'm talking to you, I am deciding what to say, isn't it? And I'm sending that instruction to the body and I'm looking at the slide and I'm getting information that I have to share with you. And I'm utilizing the body in the process. So I'm getting the view of the slides through my eyes, through sensation, it is reaching me. And then I'm deciding what to say and what not to say. So this is the way exchange of information keeps on taking place between me and the body. And this is something that you can explore about yourself also. Try to find out how the transaction is taking place between you and the body. Now, the first thing to be clear about is whether you and body are two different entities or the same thing. So this is something that we have been harping upon since beginning. And I need to observe, you need to observe this through direct observation that you are not the body. You are a consciousness unit, the body is a material unit and you are there with the body, but neither the body nor the body is inside you. The two are two distinct entities and the two are coexisting and there's exchange of information taking place between you and the body try to explore this and find it out how the exchange of information is taking place so we had briefly talked about exercise two now in exercise two we are trying to observe the self the body and the interaction between the self and the body and this is happening by the self isn't it this observation is happening by the self in the self so as a first step, you are observing that you are there and the body is there. And as a second step, you are observing the interaction that you have with the body. And in this interaction, you are giving instructions and you are receiving sensation from the body. Then in the third step, you are observing who is the decision maker. Okay, so who makes the decision? This is something that we are trying to study in the third step. In the fourth step, you are trying to see that you are at a distance from the sensation. It's not that the sensation is there in you or you are a part of the sensation. As a fifth step, you are trying to observe the interaction with the world outside and you are able to see that you are always associating some meaning to the sensation, isn't it? So your happiness or unhappiness is decided by this meaning. In the sixth step, you are trying to Look into the role of your sanskar in associating this meaning. Now, in our practice exercises, we'll look into all these steps in little more detail. We'll try to observe the various details of this. And in the sixth step, we are trying to observe the coexistence and the step. This is something that may take a lot of time. So we can start from step one and then go on observing up to step seven. So in step one, you're observing the self and the body. And this is done 
by the self. So we are making the following important observations about the self and the body. One, I am there. So I am, this is something that we can conclude. And how do you conclude this? On the basis of observing, that is seeing my activities. So the self is a reality. It does exist. It is an existential reality. Now, this is very important to observe that it may appear to you that whatever we are saying as self or I, okay, is it some kind of activity of the body? Is it some kind of influence of the body? Some kind of phenomenon in the body? Or is it some distinct reality? Now, at the level of thought, you may rationally say that, yes, I am different from the body. I am a conscious entity. The body is a material entity and things like that. But are you able to observe it? Unless you observe, it does not become a part of your understanding. And this is something that we have been emphasizing in this course, direct observation of the reality. So the proposal has reached you. You are trying to study the proposal. But ultimately, at some point of time, you have to directly observe the reality. And that starts from the self. So I am one thing. Second thing, the body is. And how do I come to know that the body is there? So on the basis of observing, that is seeing or reading the sensations from the body, and we can see that the body is a reality. It exists. It is an existential reality. Now here also I say that we are aware that the body is there. But ultimately, it is only information that I have received for me through sensation. This might sound something strange to you, but ultimately, have you been directly able to observe the body or by the sensation that you are receiving from the body, you start accepting yes, that the body is there. So to begin with, just try to see whether you are there and the body is there. And you can see that the two are quite distinct to realities. The self is a conscious entity, the body is a material entity, but at least leave out these words, uh, consciousness and material, and then try to see whether, yes, the two are the same reality, one is the effect of the other, or the two are distinct realities. Now, unless we are able to see this, confusions continue, and those confusions do not allow us to examine things further. So this is a very important aspect of reality, and this is something that you have to observe by yourself. So try to see whether you are able to observe this, to reiterate, I am, the body is, and the two are two distinct entities, distinct realities. This is something that we are addressing in step one. Now, in step two, if you see, we are observing the interaction between the self and the body, and that is happening by the self. So what is the interaction between me and the body? Is this an exchange of information or exchange of some physiochemical things? Now, what kind of interaction is taking place between me and the body? Is it something physiochemical? So am I some physiochemical effect of the body? Or I am a distinct conscious entity? If I am distinct entity, then of course the physiochemical interaction will not take place with me because I am not physiochemical. The body is physiochemical. I am not physiochemical. So the transaction between me and the body cannot be physiochemical. So it has to be some sort of information. So here you can observe that it is only exchange of information. There is no exchange of physiochemical things. But to begin with, keep it open. Try to observe this. So I give instruction to the body. This is one part of the information exchange that is happening. And when I take some work from the body, I give it some instructions like get up, walk, sit down, whatever. And this instruction is an information. It is not something physiochemical. On the base of events taking place in the body, sensations are taking place. I read some of these sensations and not all. So there are so many activities taking place inside the body. Every cell is active. Every molecule of the body is active. Every organ is active. And I can always sense the activity in each and every part of the body, but I'm not sensing everything. I am sensing only some of them. So I read some of the sensations. And I tape the sensation that I read. And the sensation also is, a, is an information. The interaction between the self and the body is only in the form of transaction of information and not of any physiochemical things. This is something that you can conclude here. 
that whatever information exchange or whatever exchange or transaction is taking place between me and the body, it is only exchange of information and there is nothing physiochemical here. So this part also try to observe. And this direct observation is very important. We can listen to all this. We can think over it, analyze it, compare it. We can find it apt, but ultimately, unless it is not a part of my observation, I do not know it, isn't it? And unless I know something, doubts, confusions, dilemmas do continue. And I want to get rid of that. So that's why this direct observation is very important. So in step three, you observe the decision maker who is deciding to give instruction to the body or to read specific sensations from the body. Is it the self or the body? Now, many times you can assume that it is something happening by itself, spontaneously, automatically, by default, whatever you can say. But you miss out the point that you are making a decision there. So maybe when I am delivering this lecture, there might be some sensation coming from the leg, but I might be ignoring it because when I'm conveying something to you, that carries importance for me. And that sensation that I'm getting from the throbbing of the leg does not carry that much of importance. And I so ignore that in sensation. So I ignore that sensation. So here again, our decision making is involved. When I'm talking to you, then also decision making is involved. When I'm reading some slide, then also some decision making is involved. Now here again, in front of me, there are so many words, but I will pay attention to the word that I have to speak up. I'll pay attention to the word that I have to speak, that I have to talk about. So again, some decision making is taking place. And it is not the body. This is something that we are trying to conclude. It is not the body. But again, keep it open, try to observe. So what is being said is that, again, the decision making is being done by the self and not the body. Now, you may agree to this again at the outset that yes, it is the self, but are you able to see it every time you are interacting with the body? Are you able to see in every exchange of information that you are making a decision? So try to observe that, that subtle observation is required here. Now through that, you can see that it is the self that is I that decides to give instruction to the body. And again, it is the self that decides to read specific sensations from the body. So the decisions regarding the exchange of information between me and the body are entirely mine. I think I should be highlighting this. It is entirely mine. Okay. The body is only working as an instrument for me. The decision making is taking place in me by myself. So I interact with the body as and when I consider it important. I interact with the body from time to time and not continuously. So you can take multiple examples. When you are giving instruction to the body, that is also not continuous. When you are reading the sensation from the body, that is also not continuous. So you are making a decision. And this is happening as and when required, when you consider it important, but not every time, but not continuously. So the body acts according to the instruction that I give it. And I use the body as per my decision. I use the body as my instrument. So we have been using this word instrument that the body is an instrument, but unless you are able to observe this directly, uh, that does not become very clear to you. So try to find it out. So one thing is that try to find out the exchange of information that is taking place in you. And also try to find out whether it is continuous or from time to time. It might be regular, but it is not continuous. And with this, you can get the clarity that the body is an instrument. It is outside you. You are exchanging the information with the body as per the need. So again, this is for you to observe. Try to observe the decision making every time. So you will be able to see that I decide what to do and what not to do. And when I'm saying I, it is for you. Isn't it? So I decide what to do and what not to do. At the level of self, I decide my desire. That is my feeling, thought, expectation. At the level of body where my involvement is required, I give instruction to the body in accordance with the work that I want to take from the body. And the body does accordingly. I operate the body as per my decision. I use the body like an instrument. So you can conclude by you know, having this clarity that it is ultimately you who decide at the level of self as well as at the level of body when you have to receive some information or read some sensation from the body. 
and there you are operating the body as per your decision and utilizing the body like an instrument. So I use the taste from the sensation to decide what is to be done with the body, with the outside world. Now you are getting some taste from every sensation. Okay. So I will take an example of rain outside. Now you get some taste out of the rain, isn't it? And then you decide what is to be done, either to get wet in the rain or to protect yourself using an umbrella. The rain is there outside, the body is there, you are eating the sensation, but you are taking some decision here, isn't it? So you can conclude this, that ultimately it is I who decide my desire, thought and expectation. And again, here at the level of body, I give instruction to the body in accordance you know, with the work that I have to take from the body. And it is ultimately me only who is taking the decision. So try to observe this, try to find it out. Now, further in step three, we can go further to study that when you are observing the interaction between the self and the body by the self, then you are the observer, that is seer, you are the doer, that is decision maker, and you are the enjoyer, that is experiencer. So I see, I observe, as and when required, I use the body to see, and there are five sense organs that I have in the body, and through those sense organs, I am receiving information from the rest of the world, and I'm reading them as sensation. I'm the one who decides to see. In that sense, I am the observer. I use the body as an instrument. So I am the observer. I am the seer. I am the one who understands. I am the one who receives the information. I decide to do. So as and when required, from time to time, I give instruction to the body. In that sense, I am the doer. So we, if you remember, we had talked about seer, doer, and experiencer or enjoyer earlier. And now we are trying to study the same thing through our direct observation. So the content may appear similar to you, something that we had deliberated earlier also. But you can get further clarity on this when you try to observe this yourself. And I am the one who experiences happiness or unhappiness. So I am the enjoyer. Again, try to observe this. Okay, and observing would mean not, not just thinking, okay, not just analyzing, but observing, observing, seeing, seeing the reality. Now in step four, you are observing the distance between the self and the body. Now, when I'm reading the sensation taking place in the body, try to find out, try to respond to these questions. Am I the sensation? Am I in the sensation? Or I am at a distance from the sensation? Which one is true? Can you think over it? Can you explore this? Can you verify this? Am I the sensation? So sensation is something happening in the body. So of course, I'm not the sensation. Am I in the sensation? Now this is something that you have to look at. Whether you are part of the sensation or you are something different from the sensation. And you can further see whether you are at a distance from the sensation. So you can conclude here that I am not the sensation. I am not in the sensation. There is a distance between me and the sensation. I can read the sensation taking place in any part of the body from where I am at a distance from the sensation. And while observing this, you can also go further to observe that there is a distance between the self and the body. I can increase or decrease that distance. So again, uh, this might appear a little surprising to you, but I'll just say that you are occupying the same point in space where the body is there, but you are at a distance from the body and that's how you can increase or decrease the distance from the body. This may take some time for you to observe, but you can still keep it open and start observing. So try to observe this, that you are different from the sensation. You are not the sensation. Now in step four, we have been trying to observe the distance between the self and the body by the self. Now, earlier we started by observing the distance that I have with the sensation. And gradually by observing the distance from the sensation, we can observe that there's a distance between me and the body. So when I'm reading the sensation taking place in the body, try to find out whether I am the sensation or I am in the sensation or I'm at a distance from the sensation. So you'll see that this is something that you may observe, that you are 
not the sensation you are not a part of the sensation sensation is something outside you it is an information that you are getting from the body the body is also outside you you are not a part of the body so you can see that you are not the sensation right you are not in the sensation and there is a distance between me and the sensation i can read the sensation taking place in any part of the body from where i am at a distance from the sensation now observing all this you can come to a state where you can observe this particular thing that you are at a distance from the body there is a distance between the self and the body now at a rational level you can say that yes i am a conscious unit the body is a material unit hence the two cannot be the same hence the two are distinct right but have you been able to observe this this is something that we are trying to focus upon in this step that can i observe that the body is outside me and there is a distance between me and the body and i can increase or decrease that distance now this is something that may appear a little surprising to you now since you are at a distance from the body though you are occupying the same point in space that the body is occupying but since there is a distance between you and the body you can increase or decrease that distance keep it for the time being open but try to understand the meaning of this so try to explore and verify this particular thing how you are at a distance from the body and how you can increase or decrease that distance too now through all this what we are essentially going to do we are going to understand the self and the body as two distinct existential realities coexisting together isn't it now going further the consciousness is there the material is there there is exchange of information taking place between the consciousness and the material the consciousness is sending instruction to the material and the consciousness is receiving sensation from the material now if you look at the needs of consciousness it is to ensure happiness prosperity and that also in continuity and uh, more precisely it is the continuity of happiness so the needs are continuous if you look at the activity they are also continuous in time if you look at the material thing starting from the body its needs so if you look at the material thing that is the body its needs are physical facilities and they are all required temporarily from time to time now when i am able to understand this then i am able to be responsible towards the body and then i am responsible to the body for three purposes one is to nurture the body the other is to protect the body and the third is to rightly utilize the body and as a result there is health in the body and that essentially means that the body acts according to me and the parts of the body are in harmony so you must be remembering the definition of health and self regulation we had talked about earlier also about this so the physical facilities required to fulfill the responsibility of the self toward the body to keep the body in good health and that means that these three purposes are met properly that is the body gets properly nurtured protected and rightly utilized now why is this being said again here you have to understand this so we try to observe the self and the body as two distinct realities and with this understanding we also get the clarity about physical facilities that i have to utilize for the body when i am able to see that i am not the body i am different from the body there is a distance between me and the body right then i am able to be much more clear about the needs of the body and the program to fulfill the needs of the body now i can see how the sensation has to be understood properly how the right meaning has to be associated properly so that i can make out the need for physical facilities rightly whether i am taking food for nurturing or for taste or for show off this is something that we can make out now we are getting some sensation from the food the self is getting some sensation from the food and the self is associating a meaning to that sensation whether this food will ensure respect for me whether this food will ensure health for my body and whatever so with the direct observation now you are able to see what health means what self regulation means and you can also make out through this that the physical facility that you require is again for a limited quantity so the meaning of prosperity gets further clear to you isn't it through this observation 
so the required physical facility can be recognized along with the required quantity the quantity of food that is required for nurturing the body you can make out whether it is limited or unlimited so we had said that yes it is limited but that might be only at the level of thought now by directly observing the exchange of information between me and the body i can come to the same conclusion but now it is at a deeper level it is not only at a rational level it is at a deeper level isn't it so whatever food i require it is for nurturing the body and it is limited in quantity clothes or shelter that i require for protecting the body it is again limited in quantity the instruments equipments for right utilization of the body is it again limited or unlimited so you can see that this is limited now what does this ensure you are able to see that whatever physical facilities i require for the body are limited in quantity because they are meant only for three purposes for nurturing the body for protecting the body and for rightly utilizing the body and now you are able to make it out through your direct observation of the information exchange that is taking place between you and the body you are getting some sensation from the body so for example when you start eating food you get one kind of sensation that you are feeling hungry and after some time you get a different kind of sensation that your stomach is full now now say after the stomach is full a very delicious kind of dish appears on the table and you have a sight coming to you of that delicious food you get the sensation and then you again associate some meaning to that sensation so the stomach is full now whether to go for this delicious dish or not now whatever meaning you associate to the sensation of sight there you will take a decision accordingly try to observe this next time when you are having food try to observe this so by doing all this exercise we are able to see that the need for physical facility is limited and now you are able to see it again through direct observation so the food is required in a limited quantity clothes shelter these are all required in limited quantity instruments are again required in limited quantity so we can see that physical facility is required to fulfill the responsibility of the self toward the body uh, to keep the body in good health and that is required only for three purposes for nurturing the body protecting the body and for rightly utilizing the body and thus the required physical facility can be identified now this is something that we had studied earlier also in the previous course also we are saying this again this is not just to repeat the content the purpose is that we had read it we had uh, analyzed it but now can we directly make it out now can we understand this through direct observation by observing the sensation that i am getting from the body can i make out the need for physical facility this is something to be explored so you'll see that the physical facility is required only for three purposes for nurturing the body protecting the body and for rightly utilizing the body and, and we require food for nurturing the body clothes shelter for protecting the body and instruments for rightly utilizing the body and you can see that the quantity of each is limited but again try to make it out so by observing the sensation that you are getting from the body can you make out the limit of needs for example if you are taking food so when you are feeling hungry you are able to see that it is needed and after some time your stomach gets full you again get a sensation that sensation conveys you that the stomach is full now and you might have associated a meaning to that now that yes now no longer want to consume any food but let's say a delicious dish appears on the table and what do you decide then go about having it or not having it so now again you are getting some sensation right so through that sensation only you are getting the information that a delicious dish has arrived and you are associating a meaning to that sensation but again you can find out whether the need of the body has changed or it has remained the same is the need of the body limited or unlimited for nurturing similarly for protecting the body whether it is limited or unlimited so it is winter time it is cold and you put on some warm clothes and you can see that when you do not put on the warm clothes you get one kind of sensation and then you are able to associate a meaning that i need to go for warm clothes once you have one or two layers of warm clothes you feel that now it is warm enough isn't it you again get a sensation so you are able to see the limit of physical facility through sensation similarly for right utilization of the body 
we are able to get the limit of instruments or uh, equipment that you use through sensation. So you can understand the need for physical facility by observing the sensation. This is what is being added upon here when we are talking about the same content again. So you can conclude that physical facility is required to keep the body in good health so that right utilization of the body can be ensured. And that essentially means that physical facility is required only for these three purposes. And if you can see that the physical facility is required only for three purposes, then you can also see that they are required only for only in limited quantity. And thus we can understand the meaning of prosperity through direct observation. So earlier you received the proposal, you analyzed it in your imagination and you concluded that yes, the need for physical facility is limited. But now by observing the sensation directly, by getting different sensations after consuming different quantities of physical facility, you again get that conclusion. And then you have a better clarity because this has come to you through your direct observation, not at the level of thought. And that will continue in you. This is what is being tried upon in this part of the lecture. So we had defined prosperity earlier also that prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility. And here there are two elements. One is the identification of the required physical facility, including the required quantity. And that is possible with right understanding. So with this observation, now you can understand prosperity better. So we had seen that prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility. And here are, there are two things. One is the identification of the requirement of physical facility. And the second thing is having or producing more than required. So the first part is identification of the required physical facility, including the required quantity with right understanding. Now, how do you make out the requirement of physical facility rightly? There is a the role of sensation. When you do not have adequate, for example, you are consuming food, you have not consumed adequate food, then you get one kind of sensation. When you consume adequate food, you get another kind of sensation. When you consume adequate clothes, you get a different kind of sensation. Isn't it? So by observing the transaction between the self and the body, I can make out very precisely the need for physical facility. And then only the feeling of prosperity can continue in me. Otherwise, if it only remains at the level of thought, it may get diminished sometime later. And then the second part is ensuring availability or production of more than required physical facility with right skills. These are two components of the feeling of prosperity. And we had said earlier that a prosperous person thinks of right utilization, thinks of nurturing the other, while a deprived person thinks of accumulation, thinks of exploiting the other. Isn't it? So think about this. Think about this at a deeper level because we had studied this definition of prosperity earlier. But now by observing the transaction between the self and the body, we are trying to internalize the meaning of prosperity. We are trying to contemplate on the meaning of prosperity that I can find out by myself and not at the level of thought, at the level of understanding how much is enough in terms of physical facility for me. Are you able to get this? Try to make it out. So we had seen earlier that we can observe two categories of human beings. One category would be who are lacking physical facility and they are unhappy and deprived. The second category is of people who are having physical facility still unhappy and deprived. But what we really want to be is to have physical facility at the same time be happy and prosperous. Now, how to shift from one or two to three? For that, I have to understand the existence of self and body. And for that, I have to study the transaction that takes place between me and the body. In fact, it will also necessitate the exercise one where we try to study the feeling, whether I'm going for physical facility for fulfilling the needs of the body or to get some favorable feeling from others. Let's say to get attention of others, to get respect from others. If that is the case, then I cannot be able to make out the right need for physical facility whatsoever we may try to analyze. And that's how this direct observation is important. Direct observation of the self 
direct observation of the body and the transaction between the self and the body. So we can see that if identification of required physical facility is missing, then one can only shift between category one and category two. This third is not possible. This is possible only with the right identification of the required physical facility and the availability or production of more than required physical facility. But that sense of having more, that feeling of having more comes up only when we are able to understand it. We are able to understand the need of physical facility rightly. And to reiterate the same thing, we can see how there's a gross misunderstanding in the society today. If you look at the current situation, if we do not observe the self and the body rightly, if you do not observe the transaction that takes place in the self and the body, then a confusion continues that the self is the same as the body. And then we try to equate the naturally acceptable feelings in the self to the physical facilities like food, clothes. And then something which remains as a need in continuity in me, okay, I try to fulfill through physical facility and then the need for physical facility appears to be unlimited. So here, both exercise one and exercise two are very important. In exercise one, we have been trying to study the feelings in the self. In exercise two, we have been trying to observe the sensation that I get from the body. And this is how we can make out the need. Otherwise, this kind of scenario will be there. And then the accumulation of physical facility appears to be unlimited. And then there is a sense of deprivation. And then you are caught in a loop. Okay, there's a feeling of deprivation that I don't have enough. And then there is effort for physical facility by whatsoever means possible. And then we try to accumulate as much as possible, but still the sense of deprivation continues. And then you are caught in a vicious cycle, a loop, isn't it? So having said this, we can study the current situation. We can study the current state of being at a personal level and uh, try to see how we can come out of this kind of state. So this was all for the lecture in this part. And now we can go for the assignment. So this is the homework for you today. If we are able to see by direct observation that need for continuous happiness is the need of the self and it is fulfilled by activities of the self and not by physical facility. Then in the light of this, now try to do these four things. First of all, find out the need of physical facility. And that would certainly mean to find out the need for the health of the body and for social participation. Estimate the quantity required. Now we took some examples to study how we can make out through observing the sensation that we get from the body, the limit of need for physical facility. Now with this observation, you can estimate the quantity of different physical facilities that you require. Let's say food, clothes, houses, instruments, gadgets, all those things you can make out by observing the sensation that we get from the body and then try to see whether you have more than required or not. Do you feel prosperous or not? So this is the first question. And an important thing that is being said here is that the need of the self is fulfilled by the activities of the self and not by physical facility. So try to conclude this also. This will be a major takeaway for you if you are able to accomplish this. The second question is, do you have the feeling of self-regulation in the self or for the body? So when you are eating food, try to make out whether it is for nurturing the body or is it primarily for getting happiness out of the sensation that you're getting from the food? Isn't it? So how do you decide whether I have to take some more food? Is it for happiness that you are getting from the sensation or is it for fulfilling the need of the body? Try to make it out. How much is your body affected by the status of the self? So try to see when you are angry within, what is its effect on the body? When you are at peace within, what is its effect on the body? When you are irritated, frustrated, tense, then what is the effect on the body? If you are able to study this sharply, I'll say that this will also have an impact on your health. Because as it is being said also that most of the problems today in health are psychosomatic. So ultimately the feelings in the self do influence the health of the body. So try to study this, that how you are transacting information with the body, sending instruction to the body or receiving sensation from the body in different states of the self. At peace within, angry within, frustrated within, or happy within, whatever. Try to make it out and try to study and write it. This is the assignment for you. These two questions are there. So in the lecture today, we studied the interaction of the self and the body. 
and we try to study the interaction through direct observation. And we are going to follow these steps in our practice session also. This was just an initiation of the process that we are going to accomplish. And you could also see the takeaway from this kind of observation. By observing the transaction between the self and the body, I can understand prosperity precisely, rightly. I can also ensure the feeling of self-regulation in me that will have uh, effect on the body also, that will ensure health also. So by studying the interaction of the self and the body, we can have a better clarity of the self-regulation and prosperity. This is the major takeaway from this lecture, I'll say. And you try to observe this uh, transaction more precisely as we go along. So this is all for the lecture today. Thank you.